you have these um, uh, membranes with these voltage gated ion channels that selectively let um, these charged molecules that are in in the extracellular matrix like in and out. Um, and these neurons generally have these like resting potential where there's a voltage difference between inside the cell and outside the cell. And um, when there's some sort of stimuli that changes uh, the state such that they need to send information to the, the downstream network, um, you know, you start to kind of see these like sort of orchestration of these different molecules going in and out of these channels. They also open up, like more of them open up once it reaches some threshold uh, to a point where, you know, you have a depolarizing cell that sends a action potential. So it's a just a very beautiful kind of orchestration of these uh, these these um, molecules, and um, what we're trying to do when we place an electrode or parking it next to a neuron is that you're trying to measure these local changes in the potential. Um, again, mediated by uh, the the uh, the movements of the ions. And what's interesting, as I, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of physics involved, um, and the two dominant physics for this electrical recording domain is diffusion physics and electromagnetism. And where one dominates, where Max Maxwell's uh, equation dominates versus Fick's law dominates, depends on where your electrode is. Um, if it's close to the source, uh, mostly electromagnetic based, um, when you're farther away from it, it's more diffusion based. So. Essentially, when you're able to park it next to it, you can listen in on those individual chatter um, and those local changes in the potential. And the type of signal that you get are these canonical textbook neural uh, spiking waveform. When you're the moment you're further away, and based on some of the studies that people have done, um, you know, Christoph Koch's lab and and others, once you're away from that source by roughly around 100 micron, which is about uh, width of a human hair, you no longer hear from that neuron. You, you're no longer able to kind of have the system sensitive enough to be able to um, record that particular um, local membrane potential change in that neuron. And just to kind of give you a sense of scale also, when you, when you look at a 100 micron voxel, so 100 micron by 100 micron by 100 micron box uh, in a brain tissue, there's roughly around 40 neurons. And whatever number of connections that they have. So there's a lot in that volume of tissue. So the moment you're outside of that, you're, there's just no hope that you'll be able to detect that change from that one specific neuron that you may care about. Yeah, but as you're moving about the space, you'll be hearing other ones. So if you move another 100 micron, you'll be hearing chatter from another community. Correct. And so the, the whole, the sense is you want to place as many as possible electrodes and then you're listening to the chatter. Yeah, you want to listen to the chatter and, and at the end of the day, you also want to basically let the software do the, do the job of mm -hmm. decoding. Um, and um, just to kind of go to, you know, why ECOG and EEG work at all, right? Um, when you have these local changes, you know, obviously it's not just this one neuron that's uh, activating. There's many, many other networks that are activating all the time. And you do see sort of a general change in the potential of this electro, like this charge medium. And that's what you're recording when you're farther away. I mean, you, you still have some reference electrode that's uh, stable and the brain that's just electroactive organ. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing some combination aggregate uh, action potential changes, and then you can pick it up, right? It's a much slower um, changing uh, signals, but you know, uh, there there are these like canonical kind of oscillations and waves, like gamma waves, beta waves, like when you sleep, that that can be detected because there's sort of a synchronized um, kind of global global uh, effect of the brain that that you can detect. Um, and I mean, the physics of this go like I mean, if we really want to go down that rabbit hole, like there there's a lot that goes on in terms of like why diffusion physics at some point dominates when you're further away from the source. You know, it, it, it's just a charged medium. Um, so similar to how when you have electromagnetic waves propagating in atmosphere or in, in a charged medium like a plasma, there's this weird shielding that happens that actually um, further attenuates the signal um, as you move away from it. So 
yeah, you see, like, if you do a really, really deep dive on kind of the signal attenuation over distance, you start to see kind of one over R square in the beginning and then exponential drop off. And that's the knee at which, you know, you go from electromagnetism dominating to diffusion physics dominating. But once again, with the electrodes, the the biophysics that you need to understand is, is um, not as deep because no matter where you're placing that, you're listening to a small crowd of local neurons. Correct, yeah. So once you penetrate the brain, um, you know, you're in the arena, so to speak. And there's a lot of neurons. There are and, many, many of them. But then again, there's like, uh, there's a whole field of neuroscience that's studying like how the different groupings, the different sections of the seating in the arena, what they usually are responsible for, which is where the the metaphor probably falls apart because yeah. the, the seating is not that organized in an arena. Also, most of them are silent. They don't really do much, <laughs> um, you know, or or they their activities are, um, you know, you have to hit it with just the right set of stimulus. So they're usually quiet. They're usually very quiet. Yeah. Uh, quiet. There's, I mean, similar to dark energy and dark matter, there's dark neurons. <laughs> what are they all doing? When you place these electrodes, again, like within this 100 micron volume, you have 40 or so neurons. Like, why, are you, why do you not see 40 neurons? Why do you see only a handful? What is happening there? Well, they're mostly quiet, but like when they speak, they say profound shit, I think. That's the way I'd like to think about it.